Hello and welcome to Peterborough on the East Coast Main Line. Today we are going to be riding in first class from here up to Doncaster on one of LNER's Inner City 225s. Peterborough is a major transfer point on the incredibly busy East Coast Main Line. Serving corridor trains from LNER, Great Northern, and Thameslink, Peterborough also sees east-west services from East Midlands, Cross Country, and Greater Anglia on their local and long-distance services. Heading inside, we can make our way upstairs and across the main line to Track 4, from which our train up north will be departing. On our way over, one of Grand Central's Class 180 Atalantes passes under us on Track 2. Grand Central runs multiple services along the East Coast Main Line, but none of their trains stop at Peterborough. Grand Central will be our ride back down to London from Doncaster, which of course will be a future video, so if you want to see that, be sure to subscribe to be around when it goes live. Out on Platform 4, all signs point to an on-time departure of 10.52am. The first class coaches will be at the rear of the train on today's ride, so we'll make our way down the platform to be ready for boarding when the time comes. With 20 minutes until departure, I wasn't expecting to see much in the way of other trains, but I couldn't have been more wrong. First up was a GBRF freight service hauled along by Class 66 locomotive number 66732. It's super weird to see freight cars stacked at single height when tall double stack trains are so common in the US, but it's the price paid for running under catenary wires. I almost didn't have enough time to pull out my camera as a whole train's Class 800 Paragon whipped past on its way up to, you guessed it, Hull. Next was yet another GBRF service of mostly flatbed cars, operated by Class 66, number 66749. A Thameslink train pulled in while an East Midlands Class 158 pulled out before a slow-moving LNER Azuma meandered by on the express track. This passing Azuma brings a question to light that we'll hopefully be able to answer by the end of our journey. Are LNER's Intercity 225s better than their new Azumas? All of this railway action is great, but we need a train so we can get underway. Fortunately, LNER has us covered, and our LNER Intercity 225 service pulls in right on time. Leading our train today is Class 91 Locomotive number 91109, named after Sir Bobby Robson. 91109 is also painted in LNER's gorgeous new heritage livery. The coaches and trailing control car have since been repainted with this new livery, but at the time of filming, only our locomotive bore the new colors. Coming to a stop, we can make our way over to Coach L and board our train. We're seated today in seat L63, a window seat towards the front of the carriage. Finding our seat at the end of the coach, we can get seated and our train departs for this 48 minute ride up to Doncaster. As our train gets up to speed, we can take a moment to look at our route of the East Coast Main Line. Our journey begins heading northwest out of Peterborough, picking up speed through the suburbs. 
Once at 125 miles an hour, our train settles into a cruise, flying past Essendine and Corby Glen. Grantham is next on the main line, but our train is making no stops today, continuing on past the station and back out into rural England. The same applies for Newark on Trent, our train passing it by as if it weren't there. The main line then crosses Tuxford, Retford, and Bawtry before arriving in Doncaster. We'll cover a total of 79 miles between Peterborough and Doncaster today, with a travel time of 48 minutes. Seating on LNER's 225s is very nice, especially here in first class. First class passengers are treated to comfortable leather chairs with side bolsters and winged headrests, both of which help keep passengers in place around the high speed curves of the East Coast Main Line. Each row includes plenty of legroom, with almost an entire foot between my knees in the next seat. This also means there's more than enough space to stretch out and get comfortable. Unlike LNER's Azumas, the at seat tables can be folded in half to make entrance and egress much easier. It's also possible that this is just a feature of the priority seat I was sitting at, as the table in the group seating didn't have this folding capability. Unfolding our table reveals the placemat and, more importantly, the menu for today's travel. We'll come back to the menu in a bit, but for now we'll set it aside and continue looking at our seat. Seat adjustments are made using the button on the aisle side of the seat, which scoots the bottom forward about 4 inches while reclining the seat back around 15 degrees. Each seat also includes two armrests with one on either side. If the sun is too bright, passengers can find blinds along the windows to help block out the unwanted light. Above the seats in each row are lights, activated by the toggle switch. At seat power is provided by a single wall outlet below the window, although I was disappointed not to see any USB ports. The power notice also says no toasters or hair dryers, which is a real shame as I was planning on making some toast while drying my hair, so I guess I'll have to find something else to do on our ride. What had been a fairly grey and wet departure was soon transformed into a beautiful day as the sun began to break through the thinning cloud cover. LNER offers free Wi-Fi to all passengers on board, however, when I tried to connect to their network, I was met with a blank pop-up that never loaded. Clearly the network was there and worked well enough to get me this far, but I couldn't get it to actually let me online, which was rather disappointing. Our car attendant came through the cabin to distribute our silverware, which brings our attention back to the menu. LNER offers three variants of their first-class menus, Dish, Dine, and Deli, each of which is a variant of the other two. The most extensive of the three, and thus the best, is the Dine menu, which is what we'll get to choose from on today's train. The Dine menus are reserved for trains with an onboard chef, and thus have a much nicer selection of freshly prepared food. The Dish and Deli menus offer smaller pre-packaged options instead, which are good, but definitely not as nice as the Dine options. Unfortunately, dine menu trains are by far the most infrequent services, with only one in every five southbound trains serving dine, while only one in every seven northbound trains have the menu. Dine menus are also reserved for weekday trains only, so keep that in mind when booking your tickets. Opening up to the breakfast page, the lower selection is almost identical to what we saw on the Azuma's dish menu, but at the top are the two selections we're after today, the full LNER. The full LNER is the typical English breakfast, with sausage, bacon, hash browns, baked beans, roasted tomato, and a fried egg. There's also a vegetarian option, which I'll be having today, which swaps in meatless farm sausages and spinach for the two meat options in the full LNER. After perusing the menu, our attendant comes by to take our order and deliver a drink of our choice. I, of course, chose a nice cup of coffee. We reached our cruising speed of 125 not far outside of Peterborough. 
The East Coast Main Line is one of three lines in the UK that reach 125. The other higher speed line is the West Coast Main Line, which also peaks at 125, while HS1, the proper high speed line, regularly sees trains at 300 kph or 186 miles an hour. Breakfast is soon served. When I think of first class dining, this is what I think of, a freshly prepared meal that tastes great, and this fits the role perfectly. The hash brown was crisp and salty, the egg was perfectly over easy, the sausages were flavorful, and the beans, tomato, and spinach really brought everything together. The full LNER was a huge step up from breakfast on the Azuma, which was a prepackaged waffle and a bit of Nutella. A really delicious and filling meal. Having finished up our breakfast, we can have a look around our inner city 225. At the ends of each coach are recently installed screens, displaying a rotation of helpful travel information. For passengers traveling with larger bags, luggage racks can also be found at the ends of each coach. Moving between coaches is extremely easy on 225 sets, with each coach connected via open gantries instead of those with intermediate doors. At one end of each coach is a bathroom. The one in our coach is accessible, while the ones in the other two first-class coaches are regular facilities. Pressing the button, the door slides open and we can step inside. Pressing the close button, the door slides back closed and can be locked with the press of the lock button. The bathroom is very nice, with plenty of space to move about. The hands-free sink works well when it eventually turned on, with plenty of soap and a hands-free dryer. Above the sink is the usual mirror with a bit of script saying, go on, give us a smile. The toilet paper was also well stocked and the handrails for accessibility were plentiful and clean. The wall opposite the sink featured a beautiful picture of the UK coastline, although I have no idea where it's from. Overall, the bathroom is great, especially because of how clean it was. Props to LNER for keeping it well maintained. Returning to our seat, we can take a look at some stats for nerds. Taking us up to Doncaster this morning is the 1052 LNER service to Leeds. The service is operated by one of LNER's beautiful inner city 225 train sets. On the front of our train is Class 91 locomotive number 91109, named after Sir Bobby Robson, with driving trailer 82223 bringing up the rear. Each Class 91 locomotive is powered by four GEC DC traction motors, producing 1,575 horsepower each for a total of 6,300 horsepower. The full 6,300 horsepower can only be used from a standing start, with cruising operation using 6,090 horsepower instead of the full 6,300. Full inner city 225 train sets are rated for a top speed of 140 miles an hour, but track speeds limit trains to a top speed of 125. What's interesting though is that despite being able to operate at 125 miles an hour as a train set, Class 91 locomotives are limited to a top speed of 75 when operating engines light. The speed is limited to 75 because in the event that its safety devices fail, which results in the loss of dynamic braking via the traction motors, the locomotive still has adequate braking power via its mechanical brakes. One big question still remains unanswered from our travels on the East Coast Main Line. Are these older inner city 225 sets better than LNER's new Azumas? I honestly have to say that yes, they are, at least for first class. For starters, the interiors of the 225 sets are much nicer than the Azumas. The inner city 225s feel calm and relaxing with dim lights and wood paneled walls, while the Azumas are very bright and sterile with almost no character whatsoever. The seats on the 225s are much more luxurious and comfortable than their Azuma counterparts. Don't get me wrong, I love a good seat maquette, but nothing will beat that classic leather lounge chair feeling. And of course, there's the looks of the 225s. Yes, the Azumas are pretty in a very new age kind of way, but nothing beats that classic HST design.
Doncaster is about 10 minutes out, and knowing that I wanted to get a good look at our lead locomotive, I decided to make my way forward so we didn't have to walk as far when we arrived at our destination. Passing the cafe car, we reached the standard class coaches, which are set up in the usual 2x2 layout. Just as we picked a set of doors to wait at, an Azuma came flying past, heading south towards London. It's incredible how fast they look when the net velocity between you and the train is almost 200 miles an hour. The Doncaster suburbs come into view as our train slows, pulling up to Platform 4 right on time. Opening the door, we can step off the train and head up the platform where we find our Class 91 in all her glory. The Intercity 225 train sets and their associated Class 91 locomotives are the last reminders of the glory days of the HSTs. With styling based on the Intercity 125 and Advanced Passenger Train or APT, these train sets are some of the most iconic Intercity trains operating in the UK to date. With a crew change complete, 91109 powers up, hauling our train out of Doncaster and on towards Leeds. And I'll leave this in its entirety because that rail on wheel audio is truly incredible. And with that departure, it's time to bring today's video to a close. Next week, we'll be back on the Northeast Corridor to take a ride on the MBTA's Providence Line from Boston to Providence with a quick pit stop at Canton Junction. If you're new around here, then why not hit that subscribe button? It's totally free, and it really helps support the channel. As always, I want to give a huge shout out and thank you to my patrons and channel members. If you too want your name in the video, or just want to support the channel in more ways than one, then head on over to the links in the description below. But anyways, that's all I have for today. Thanks for riding with me, and I'll see you in the next one.